Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're gonna to be taking a look at a new bike called the Mach Will Scoria. And this e-bike has some pretty cool, unique technology that I've never before seen in any electric bike that I've tested to date. Now this thing is capable of running 120 volt household appliances up to 1000 watts off the internal battery of this bike. And you can also recharge this bike with a solar panel if you purchase their inverter to go with it. Let's get into what this inverter can do. And then we're gonna come back over, go over all the specs and features of this bike and take this baby for a test ride to see how it performs. If you guys find this video interesting and helpful, please make sure you guys stick around, subscribe, comment down below. It really helps my channel out and use the links down below. They'll probably be affiliate links and I will make a small commission possibly if you guys use them, but that's what helps support this channel. Thanks for watching. All right, so for this inverter on this bike, it goes in this included bag right here that attaches to the frame. It just twists right on there and right off with that mount in the back. Now it does bounce around a little bit on there. It's just a plastic mount. It would have been nice to see them put a strap on the bottom here so that you could strap the bottom around there. Maybe they can add that in the future. But in here is where the inverter's housed. And this is a really tight fit in here, guys. But here's the thousand watt inverter. And then there's a cable in here that attaches from this to the bike. And what you can do is you could plug a solar panel input into this here and you could charge your bike off of it and you could also run 120 volt AC off of there. So let me show you here how this works. Plug one end of the cord into the back of the inverter here and it only goes in one way. Here we go. Then we'll plug the other end of the cord into the bike here. And you can also connect this cable directly to the battery if you have the battery out of the bike because there's one of these connectors on the battery as well, which is pretty nice. You could take this and the battery with you, take it in your home, power a sump pump if your power goes out, possibly a refrigerator, depending on the amperage draw of it and certain things like that, recharge cell phones and stuff if your power goes out. So pretty nice feature in my opinion. And you can actually see that the battery level is currently at 50 volts. Now this isn't very, very bright. Um, there's four battery bars there out of five and it's at 50 volts, so pretty cool there. Not super bright on the display. Would have been nice to see a little bit brighter. Gonna hold down the AC button here to power the AC and you can see 110 volts, zero watts currently. We're gonna go ahead and plug something into it real quick. I have a watt meter here, we'll plug in. 109.6 volts, gonna plug a light in here. And you can see I'm powering that light up. You can see if I sh shut the light off, turn the light back on, and let's see how many watts it shows. 44.8 watts and it's showing 52 watts output on here. So pretty close. This is probably taking some wattage to use and so is this thing here. So pretty close within a few watts there. Here, this will really put it to the test. It's supposed to power up to a thousand watts. Let's take, let's shut this light off for a second. We'll try it on low first. 226 watts, 213, 215 on here. Bump it up to medium. 391, 370, 380. Put it on hot. 554, 555. Let's go ahead and turn this light back on. Got the light powered, blow dryer powered, pulling 620 watts. That's over a thousand watts there. 1,049, 1,050. So it is pulling over a thousand watts. Down, watts going to but I'm gonna go ahead and shut that down. You can hear the fan kick on. There's a fan in here that turns on, still using 55 watts because I still got the light being powered. But really good, guys. According to this test here, this is actually the first time I've had it under a decent load. And it ran this at 1100 watts, no problem. Now I shut it off, I didn't wait for anything to go. It's only rated up to 1000 watts, so I didn't want to push it too much. But you can see it ran 1100 watts easily there for, what was it? Maybe like 15, 20 seconds. There, the fan just shut off on here. So 
pretty cool little inverter in my opinion. One thing I want to mention is I don't think that this is a pure Synwave inverter. It's probably a modified Synwave, so you might want to watch some of your more expensive electronics. It really didn't mention about that, I don't think. Um, might be something you guys might want to look into, but for powering certain things, hair dryers, lights, uh, maybe a refrigerator, sump pump, things like that, I wouldn't have uh, no concerns with running it off of this at all. There's also a 100 watt USB-C output on the front and a 27 watt USB-C output and then a 10 amp 12 volt I believe that's a 5521 port there then you have your solar input there we're going to go ahead and plug the solar panel in now today is really a bad day to be doing this test with a solar panel because it is uh really shady out today so it is charging just not a lot right now because I mean it is a super cloudy day the sun's not even out this is really normal for a solar generator to even charge at this but it's only getting eight watts right now not going to be able to charge it on a cloudy day like today obviously I'm gonna have to try this test again in the future when it's bright and sunny all right guys so it's a bright sunny day out here today I wanted to try this again in the sun to see if I could get any solar input into this battery through this inverter I've tried two different solar panels. That one has a 23 volt output. That one has a 30 volt output. This is capable of 18 to 54.6 volts of input. And none of the panels I have will recharge this battery. I don't know what's going on. I think there's something wrong with this inverter, but it will not accept a solar charge input, which is a huge flaw in my opinion maybe there's just a defect with it this kind of defeats the whole purpose of having an inverter yes you can still run 120 volt appliances and things off of your battery but if you're out in the middle of nowhere you can't recharge your battery from solar big flaw maybe they could send me another one and i could test it again but as of now it is not working to recharge the bike from solar let's get back to the video now this is in my opinion a little bit expensive for what it is just for this alone for $400 because there's no built-in battery but like I said that is pretty cool that you can pair it with your battery and run things off of it so pretty nice feature to have so let's get back over there check out the other specs and features and take this baby for a ride so up here on the handlebars you have a nice double locking set of grips that are really ergonomic next to that you have the control pad for turning the bike on turning your headlight on and going through all the different pedal assist levels now one thing I want to mention here about this pad the up and down are between the on and off button and the headlight button and if you wear thick gloves sometimes it's really hard to hit the up and down button without hitting the other buttons now the off button does not shut the bike off if you just hit it once so that's nice you do have to hold it but it's still kind of cumbersome sometimes to get your hand on the up and down arrow because typically most bikes the up and downs at the top and bottom and it's really easy this one you kind of got to be in between so just something to think about in the center here you have a nice color display and on this display you can see these green bars on the outside here that is actually your battery level meter you can see you could go up through your pedal assist levels one through five now you can change this bike to have either three levels of assist or five levels but you cannot adjust the strength of each individual level now you can adjust the start strength which is going to be really nice for newer riders and i'll show you that a little bit here later on in the video over here on the right hand side you have a half grip twist throttle and when you turn that throttle you can see there's a line that goes up around here the faster you go the further the line goes up on the display which is pretty cool you have a seven speed shimano shifter which leads down to the 14 to 28 freewheel in the rear coming up the chain we have a 48 tooth chain ring in the front and a set of large aluminum pedals and it's using an entry level shimano shifter in the rear the rear rack on this bike has a really nice wooden inlay and it actually has a mount here where you can get an extended rack for cargo carrying capacity that comes back even further if you guys like to carry a lot of gear with you for stopping power this bike's using a set of tektro hydraulic disc brakes coming down to a pair of 180 millimeter rotors on both the front and the rear of the bike and they also have a mount up front where you can attach their optional basket for safety this bike has a dual beam headlight in the front and a tail light in the rear 
that's actually a brake light whenever you pull the brake lever. It's sitting on a pair of 20 by four inch Kenda tires. And what's really nice is that it has the white reflective strip around it so people can see you a little bit easier at night. I love when tires have that reflective strip on them. It's also sitting on mag rims, which is gonna be really nice. You don't have to adjust spokes. Another cool feature about this bike is that it comes with a pair of BMX style handlebars, which is really nice, able to adjust them forward or back for a longer reach if you're a taller rider or you can adjust them back if you're a shorter rider. I do have them adjusted back pretty far right now and you guys can see that when I do the rad test. Down below, this is another unique feature that they give you a double kickstand to put the bike on. Most bikes come with a single kickstand mounted back here and they do give you a mounting point for one back here if you do wanna change it. Pretty cool that they give you a center kickstand. That's gonna be nice if you have a lot of weight on the back. You don't have to worry about the bike tipping over this way because it would hold the weight nice. Now you do have to worry about if you're in a grassy area because it doesn't sit up super high and you gotta kind of be on a level spot to use that kickstand. I noticed earlier when I was filming in the grass, getting some pictures of it, that it was a slight dip and it didn't wanna stay up on that kickstand because of that dip, but you guys can always put something underneath there if you had to, if you were in a soft spot. The front suspension seems pretty smooth with a preload on the left and an adjustment on the right with a ton of clicks and you also can lock it out if you turn it far enough. Now there is no rear suspension but you guys can get an additional suspension seat post if you want. I'll put a link down below to a couple different suspension seat posts that I recommend as well as all my other e-bike accessories so make sure you guys check those links out. For power this bike's using a 19.6 amp hour battery housed inside the frame here. They do state that those are Samsung cells and it's using a 22 amp controller to power the 750 watt hub motor in the rear of the bike. And that hub motor is rated for 90 Newton meters of torque and it seemed to have really good power. Now this bike does have a really nice low minimum seat height for shorter riders coming in at 29 and three quarters of an inch from the ground up when I measured it and the maximum seat height is about 35 and a half inches. The bike is a little bit heavy when I weighed it on my scale, it come in at about 85 pounds. And a lot of that's gonna be due to the mag rims and just the beefiness on the frame. But you could tell really heavy duty looking on the frame here, double frame, real nice and thick down through here. One thing I want you to notice is down through here, the welding is really nice. You can't see no welds up here. However, you can see the welds here and back here. This bike does come with a set of front and rear plastic fenders. Now this back fender did seem slightly short. You're still gonna get some water up over there if you run in wet grass or on wet roads. But overall guys, really, really nice bike. A lot of cool features, but unfortunately there was one problem that I have been having with the bike. And that is that the front chain ring had a slight wobble in it when I got it. And the chain keeps popping off when I'm in gear one trying to go up a hill or sometimes it even pop off on level ground. Now I got it straightened out the best I could. I reached out to the company and told them when I got it that this front chain ring had a slight bend in it, probably due to shipping. And I was really surprised at their response, which was to flip the chain ring over. You can do that with this style chain ring. So I flipped it over, it didn't make a difference. So I flipped it back over to the original way that it's supposed to go on and tried to unbend it the best I could while I had it off. I got most of the bend out of it, but it still seems to pop off the front chain ring. And when that happens, the chain goes down between the chain guard here and gets stuck in there. You can see I got it pretty straight. There might still be a, there's still a slight wobble in it, but I think part of the issue is you could see how far that chain has to go over when it's in gear one to hit that front sprocket. Now, I don't know if that front sprocket's out too far. Maybe it needs to go in some. Not sure if the bottom bracket's set up correctly. Maybe this can be moved over some depending on how that bottom bracket's in there in the frame, but it just seems like it has to go over awfully far to hit this front sprocket. So I was a little bit surprised at their response. I was thinking that they would just send me a new front sprocket. I would put it on and be good to go. However, they never offered to send me a new one. Like I said, I tried to straighten it out the best I could. Maybe it keeps popping off because there's still a slight bend in it, or maybe there is an issue with how much angle there is on the chain from the rear sprocket when you're in gear one to the front sprocket. Just something I wanted to mention, that way if you guys were having problems with it and it's an ongoing problem, hopefully they can fix it in the future. But like I said, it could have just been that front chain ring being bent from shipping. All right, here we go, pedal assist five, full throttle, throttle only. Let's see what kind of speed we can maintain up this hill. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 
No, wait. 11, 10, 9, 8. So drop to 8 miles per hour for a split second. So I would say 8 to 9 miles per hour max speed up that hill with just throttle. All right, so now we're going to test out the brakes on this bike. This bike is using a pair of Tektro hydraulic disc brakes, which seem to be very nice so far. No squeaks and squills. Very good stopping power. No issues at all with the brakes. No squeaks right out of the box. Maybe a slight one, barely, barely. Let's try both brakes. And I could probably lock them up if I was holding on with two hands, but don't want to do that one-handed, guys. So really nice braking system here. Go down here, show you the pedal assist levels. Now you can change the pedal assist levels from three levels or five levels. That's the only adjustment there is on the pedal assist levels. You cannot adjust the power of each level. However, you can adjust the start strength in the settings so this is pedal assist one and it's a pretty nice eight miles per hour that's not too bad that seems pretty good for uh, pedal assist one let's bump it up to two two is about 11 miles per hour bump it up to three and now we're going downhill so let me turn around here get back on some level ground so we can get an accurate reading here on pedal assist three Pedal assist three is about 15 miles per hour. Pedal assist four, about 18 miles per hour. And I do have this bumped up to the max speed. I think I have it set at like 61 miles per hour. Obviously, it's not going to go that fast, but I do have it unlocked to a class three so that we can see the full potential of this bike. Make sure you guys check your local laws and restrictions if you unlock yours. This is pedal assist five. I'm not putting any pressure on the pedals, just rotating them and getting up to about 24 miles per hour, 25. Now I'm going downhill. So I would say 24 to 25 miles per hour with pedal assist five now let's try just throttle and this is going to be a just throttle test 20 21 22 23 24 so it's going to be about the same with throttle about 24 to 25 miles per hour max speed Going up this slight hill here. Still only on throttle. Has some pretty good power. Pulled me right up this hill, no problem. 15 miles an hour. 17. 18. And I'll show you the cadence here. Now this is where it's gonna get a little bit hard to pedal at high speeds because of the uh, gearing on it. It has a 48 tooth chain ring in the front and a 14 to 28 free wheel in the rear. I wish e-bikes would always start using an 11 tooth free wheel in the back for higher speeds, but most of these bikes are geared towards the legal limit, which is 20 miles per hour. And I believe that's why most of them use the 14 to 28 free will. Unfortunately, I would have liked to have seen an 11 tooth one just in case you guys do unlock it for off-road use. And it just makes it a nicer pedaling experience overall. But pretty nice bike in my opinion, guys, so far. Seems to have really good power. Now this bike is rated at 90 newton meters of torque. And it's kind of hard unless I compare it to some other bikes side by side, but it does seem to have good power. This is 
still uphill. Maintaining easily 19 to 20 miles per hour up this incline. And this bike does have a cruise control. If you hold your throttle, hold the down button for a few seconds. Seems like a pretty long time. It does activate cruise control. However, the only thing that I don't like about this is as soon as you start pedaling, it disables it. So if you were trying to set your cruise control at like a slow 10 miles per hour or something, if you're on a bike trail and then just pedal here and there, it's gonna disable that every time. It would have been nice if they left your setting intact. That way you could pedal when you want, put some effort into it. And then when you let off the pedals, it resumes your 10 miles per hour. That would have been really nice. That's usually how I like the uh, cruise control to be set up. However, this one, if you hit the throttle, if you pull a brake or start pedaling, it's gonna disable that cruise, which is a nice safety feature. But like I said, I would have preferred to have it stay engaged whenever uh, you start pedaling, at least. I have it in Pedal Assist 5 and have it set for the highest start strength, which it does throw you back a little bit when it starts. So I'm gonna go ahead into the settings, adjust that down and see if it makes any difference. All right, so to adjust any of the settings on this mock wheel Scoria, you hold the up and down arrow button down. There's the general settings there. You can change the brightness of your display, miles or kilometers, startup mode. You can change that to free mode or safe mode. Safe mode, it's not gonna allow the throttle to work until you get moving, I believe. Reset trip, we're not gonna do any of those, but if you hold the up, down, and the headlight button, that will get you into the advanced settings there. There we go. Speed limit you can see there I have set at 61, although you know it won't go 61, of course. And we are gonna go down to intensity setting. We're gonna change that to the lowest we can at one and see if that makes a difference. And another thing I wanna mention while we're in here, the wheel diameter, you really can't adjust that much. It goes straight from 22 to 26 or down to 20 there's no in between so if you had to adjust that to make your speedometer or odometer match you won't be able to it does seem to be pretty accurate as far as the speedometer goes with 22 inch setting voltage level you don't want to change that that's just set at 48 volts which is what the bike is a 48 volt uh, system here and then power assist gear this is where you could change it from three to five However, like I said, you can't adjust the levels individually. You can either select three levels of assist or five. So let's go ahead and exit out of here and we'll try this set at the softest setting. Now, even though I said you can't adjust the wheel size, Mike Beast just commented on my video. Thanks, Mike. Uh, I just had a notification there. And if you guys wanna get uh, recognized in my videos, comment if I'm out riding and I see it pop up, I'll mention your name. So even though you can't adjust the tire size to match the speedometer or the odometer, the trip odometer shows 2.7 miles on here. I reset both of these at the beginning. My GPS is showing 2.93. So in almost three miles, it's off two tenths of a mile. Like I said, we'll keep an eye on the speedometer and see how close it is, but it seemed to be pretty accurate so far from what I can tell. So now let's see how the start strength is set at low. Oh yeah, real nice and gradual. I'm in pedal assist five still, start pedaling. And I mean, it is very, very gradual. So that's gonna be really good for those of you that are new to e-bikes or um, even some older riders or non-experienced riders where you don't want it to jerk and throw you back. So that is very nice that you can adjust that there. And it seems like it does take a while for it to ramp up to top speed. So that's very, very nice. Now let's see. Yeah, it's gonna limit your throttle too. So if you turn that setting down, you're not gonna have quite as uh, responsiveness on the throttle either. So it's gonna tone both of those down, but really nice for, like I said, new riders, or riders that are non-experienced or a little bit nervous of an e-bike, that's gonna be a really nice setting for you to tone that down. So now we're going downhill. Let's see what kind of speed we can hit with throttle downhill, and I'll see when the motor cuts. I feel like it cut around 24 miles an hour. So yeah, like I said before, about 24 to 25 miles per hour max speed. 
So even though this thing doesn't get up to 28 miles per hour, it does have some pretty decent torque. So when you're going up those hills, you will maintain a faster speed than you will with a speed uh, bike that will go 28 miles per hour, but has less power with like say something with a 500 watt motor because when you hit those hills you're going to be going slow anyway so if you live in a hilly area you may want to consider you know a bike with more torque and more power versus speed because if you hit those hills you're going to lose a lot of your speed anyway unless you have a bike with a lot of power just something to keep in mind and this is the first video I'm doing with my 360 camera. This is a three, Insta360 ONE X2 or X3. Um, not sure how this footage is going to turn out. Hopefully it turns out good. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. I held off for a very long time in purchasing a 360 camera because I didn't really like the uh, quality of the video after it was produced and didn't have the time to edit the video and the extra production time that it goes into a 360 camera but i figured hey i'd give it a shot and see how it goes i've been wanting one for a long time so we're gonna go down here go up some hills and see how it does up this hill with the settings turned down to the lowest start strength so let's try it here on this hill i'm in pedal assist five Still picking up speed good, even though it's set to the lowest strength. Very easy. I'm putting very minimal effort in coming up this hill. Very, very minimal effort. Maintaining 12 miles per hour easily and just throttle will pull me up as well. I don't really recommend doing this, but 10, that's, this is probably the steepest part right here. 10 miles an hour is maintaining, nine, 10. So not bad at all on the power of this bike. Pedal assist five here. And there's about where I feel like I'm out of pedal at 21 miles an hour. If I try to keep up on the pedals, I'm pedaling pretty quick, quicker than I would want to. Oh, look at them deer. There's a nice big buck. I'm glad they didn't run out in front of me. There they go. Whoo, scared the crap out of me. I looked over. <laughs> I looked over and they were over there to my right hand side. Whoo, glad they didn't jump out. I don't think I would have been able to react quick enough with one hand. Man, them were some nice bucks. Whew. I love seeing wildlife like that when I'm out riding, just not that close to running in front of me. <laughs> All right, everyone, there you have it. There is the test and review on the Mach Will Scoria. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Please leave one. It really helps my channel out. And if you guys are interested in any of the accessories or this bike, like I said, the links will be down below. Please consider subscribing and I will see you guys around on the next one for sure. Thanks for watching.